right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story, let's start out with a strength story and not so much a bodybuilding story. Julius Maddox, the current Raw bench press world record holder, also known as a regular strength on Instagram, his current bench press world record of 744.1 pounds, which he actually lifted to break his own record, which was 739, I believe. So the bottom line is Mr. Maddox is currently the strongest bench presser in the world, current bench press world record holder in the raw bench. Recently on his Instagram, he benched unofficially in the gym a 765-pound raw bench, which for the record is about 20 pounds heavier than the current world record, his current world record. And dare I say, it even seemed to move pretty easily. I mean, he even had a little bit of a pause there. Very smooth bench press. Again, unofficial. It was a gym lift, but 20 pounds heavier than the current world record. Gym lift or not, with any kind of decent form, if you're lifting 20 pounds heavier raw than a world record, um, you, you, get, you get a little bit of wiggle room there. So very impressive. However, the more impressive thing about this is that Julius is going for his goal is to be the only, the first and only, to ever bench 800 pounds raw. That's the record he is chasing down, and he's chasing it down sooner rather than later. His goal is to compete in May, specifically May 30th in Kalamazoo, Michigan. He will be attempting that 800-pound bench press, something never done before. And honestly, I think if anybody can do it, it is Julius Maddox. The progressions that he's made in strength have been phenomenal when it comes to the bench press. And I think, you know, the the 765, how easily that moved in this video, the time between now and May, the strength that he could put on, the improvements that he could make, I think we might see an 800-pound bench press in May from Julius Maddox, but even if not, I think at some point he will hit an 800-pound bench. This is the man that's going to do it. So shout out to Julius, extremely impressive, just awesome, really pushing the limits of powerlifting. Now, next up in the news, I'm not going to tease you guys and make you wait until the end of the video, William Bonac. His recent IGTV training video on his road to the Arnold, he says it's from the beginning of February rather than now. We're nearing the end of February, so probably closer to maybe five weeks out from the Arnold Classic 2020. He's training triceps here specifically. Well, I guess he's doing arms in general, but he looks phenomenal. And his arms, you know, I said this in the last video where he had that most muscular pose. He's got this crazy roundness and 3D look to his arms. Um, I think his arms are actually one of his strongest body parts now. And I was actually very impressed by just that most muscular. But seeing him train triceps here, you really get an idea of how massive and just freaky his arms really are. Just the roundness, like I said. And I think one of the really key words when describing Williams' physique is density. Because you look at a guy like Big Rami. He's big. He's got tons of muscle but he's not as densely packed with muscle as a guy like William Bonac. I think that's really evident like in this training video, how dense his physique really is. And that's why you can have a really good comparison with a smaller guy like William Bonac who's closer to 225 and a bigger guy like Big Rami who might be closer to, say, 300 pounds on stage. There might be a 75-pound difference in overall body weight. But William Bonac is so dense that he can still compare favorably with a guy like Big Rami. And that's what makes this competition coming up in Columbus so interesting. And I think that's what makes bodybuilding today in general so interesting. Is you can have a smaller, shorter physique that's really stacked and dense with muscle compared to a taller, bigger guy. Tons of muscle, weighs 300 pounds, whatever. 75 pound weight difference on stage. And they can still be compared in the same call. And the smaller guy could still win. But to be totally fair, most of the updates that we've seen from William have only been his arms. And that's an interesting thing that I saw a lot of people point out in the comment sections of previous William Bonac videos. Is that he's not showing much of his core. He's not showing much of his midsection. Um, and showing how his upper body in general actually looks. And a lot of people are concerned about that. Um, and that's one of the sentiments that I saw echoed a lot in the comment section. Is that William should be showing more of his actual physique. We know he's got good arms, but we want to see more than that. And I'm sure he will, or he might just wait until the day of the show. But in any case, I don't think William Bonac is going to look bad at the Arnold Classic. I think he is going to be a top three guy no matter what. Well, I shouldn't say no matter what, because obviously if he comes in looking you know, completely unconditioned, he's not going to be top three, but I don't think that's going to be the case at all. So best of luck to William Bonac as he prepares for the 2020 Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio. Now the next story that I have for you guys today um, is an interesting one, of course. 
So as you guys know, there are currently two IFBBs, and there's a little bit of controversy going on between them. Right now you have the IFBB Pro League, which is the one you're familiar with here today, the one that runs the Olympia, the Arnold Classic, Ohio, the New York Pro, Athleticon. That is our beloved IFBB Pro League here in the United States. Now there's another one, the IFBB Elite Pro, and they have their own Instagram page, and they have separated from the IFBB Pro League, and they have been for a couple of years now. Now... Uh, I've seen some people sending me this on Instagram. The announcement made on the IFBB official Instagram that the Mr. America competition is returning. Now, interestingly enough, this is not our IFBB here in America. This is the IFBB Elite Pro. This is the other IFBB. So this is what I found interesting. Number one, I think it's great. I think the Mr. America should be brought back. I think it's a great competition. But the interesting thing here. This is the Mr. America competition. Listen to the title. It says in the caption, The Mr. America 2020 will be held on May 22nd through May 24th in Lima, Peru. The Mr. America is being held in Peru. Now, call me crazy, but I don't think that counts as a Mr. America competition. So I just wanted to dispel some of that confusion because people seem to think there was going to be a brand new Mr. America here in America in 2020, this coming May, the Mr. America coming back, this classic competition. No, this is the other IFBB, and it's not being held in America. Therefore, I do not think it can be legitimately called the Mr. America. So there you have it. The Mr. America is back, I guess, in some capacity. Very weird one here. Now, next up in the news, a Patrick Moore story. So it wouldn't be a Nick Strength and Power video without a Patrick Moore story. And I saw people commenting that on the past couple of videos because I didn't talk about Patrick. They're saying, man, where's the Patrick Moore story? There's got to be a Patrick Moore story. Well, here you have it. So shout out to Quincy Whittington underscore blessed on Instagram who posted up this full posing video with none other than our beloved Patrick Moore. Now, it is not made clear in this posing video when exactly the video was filmed, but assuming it was recent, because it was posted just one day ago. So let's assume that in this video you're looking at a Patrick Moore that's maybe two to three weeks out from the Arnold Classic. What do you guys think of Patrick Moore's current shape, if that is his physique, two to three weeks out? And honestly, I've been digging deep to find these weird little updates for you guys, these obscure little videos on lesser-known Instagram pages, so make sure... You hip thrust that like button because I'm trying really hard to give you guys some interesting scoops in these news videos lately, and I hope you do enjoy it and appreciate it. Now, the next story that I have for you guys today, people tell me this is an interesting story. I don't really know because I'm not really too familiar with this guy, but I've had a lot of people tag me and send me this picture. So, Tavi Castro, that's kind of a fun name. Tavi, 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 Tavi. Tavi, 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 Tava. So this guy, Tavi Castro, who apparently is famous for owning Body Engineers, which I guess is an apparel company, I guess he's on his road to competing in classic physique at the 2020 Mr. Olympia. I guess that's his goal. According to this recent picture that he posted, this is his first competition in eight years. He won in a tough class. So I guess right now he's in the process of whatever competition he's competing in to get his pro card um, and then after the pro card, he's got to qualify for the Olympia. I guess this is a major milestone on his journey to that Olympia stage. So congratulations to Tavi 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 Castro. You appear to be a pretty popular guy, my dude. A lot of guys have been sending me your pictures. Now, next up in the news is a freak from down under. This is a guy that a lot of people have been sending me his videos and pictures. He's from Australia. Actually, I don't actually know for sure that he's from Australia, but he is competing in the Arnold Classic Australia lineup, Jake Nicolopoulos. Now, Jake is an interesting guy because he's not one of the bigger names in this lineup, but he is one of the bigger physiques. Just taking a quick glimpse at his Instagram page and some of the training videos and posing videos that he has there, the guy is clearly a freak, and could he be a dark horse, a guy that a lot of people aren't expecting to do well at this Arnold Classic Australia? That could be a guy that cracks the top six unexpectedly. So I want to put this guy on the map for you guys that might not have heard of him because this is a guy that might do some serious damage at the Arnold Classic Australia. Looking back at some of his past competition photos, he seems to have pretty good conditioning. A gnarly upper body, some pretty gnarly arms, a gnarly back, 
and looks to be potentially somebody we should be on the lookout for at this Arnold Classic Australia. So definitely on my radar now. A lot of people have been sending me his pictures and videos and telling me to keep an eye on this guy because he seems to be so impressive in these updates. So I guess we'll see in, let's see, how many more weeks do we have to the Arnold Classic Australia? Four? Yeah, sure. Maybe four weeks till the Arnold Classic Australia. So we got that to look forward to. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. And as always, please subscribe to this channel. If you have not subscribed already, please give this video a thumbs up if you did, in fact, enjoy it. And as always, Nick Strength and Power, signing out.